What is good YouTube and welcome back to our brand new video here over on Crushables Extended and today we got a banger of an article. So this title, our title of this article is the moves every NBA team needs to make to win a title. So Bleacher Report has this an article that's going to showcase how each team can win a title. So this sounds like a freaking banger. Let's get right into it. Before we get into today's video, make sure you guys drop a like on this one. Of course, subscribe if you're new to the channel. As we are trying to approach 1,000 subs over here, and you guys' support over here has been amazing. So thank you guys so much for that. This just allows me to talk basketball without having to only play 2K. So uh, this is awesome uh, channel over here. But regardless, this, uh, this article is written by Zach Buckley. The moves every NBA team needs to make to win a title. So I'm excited to read this, to be honest with you. Let's just get right into it. As if you couldn't tell, there's a UFC event Saturday if you want to see it. Man, that is all over the place right now. But regardless, here we go. Atlanta Hawks trade John Collins for two-way wing. Okay. Yeah, John Collins is somebody that has been in trade rumors for so long, yet has never been traded. I'm going to go through this re really quickly. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on each one. But yeah, it makes sense. Get a 3 and D guy and uh, John Collins. But Kind of depends who you're looking for. Like, who are you really going to trade John Collins for? Because I feel like John Collins is a really, really solid player. And maybe, you know, John Collins can already shoot the three a little bit. Maybe he could develop into that two-way wing and showcase a little bit more defense. I don't know, man. We'll see. I don't know if I would just trade John Collins for anybody. You know, that's probably why he hasn't been traded, honestly. So, next. Boston Celtics find another shot creator if they didn't already. Yeah, I mean... I think the Celtics already had a really good offseason, so I'm hoping that this uh, pushes them over the top. I mean, they just got to the finals and added Brogdon to Danilo Gallinari. I understand they were trying to add Kevin Durant. Now, how long ago was that? I'm not sure. I think keeping Jalen Brown is probably better. Just keep Jalen Brown and just team together. They just made the finals together, and you made the team even better. Brad Stevens has done a tremendous job, and who knows? Maybe the trade deadline, he does something else. So, I like the idea of, you know, this. Find another shot creator if they didn't already. I think they might have found it with, like, Brogdon or... Whatever, or somebody else develops it. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. I think the Celtics have done a fine job. They're probably already a championship contender. I mean, they just made the finals and added a couple of studs to the roster. Next, Brooklyn Nets, keep KD and then get bigger in the backcourt. Yes, I agree. So keep keep Kevin Durant and keep Kyrie Irving as much as you can because that would make you a contender. Uh, if Kyrie is fully committed to playing, you're definitely on something. And then if Ben Simmons can play that power forward role, be that Draymond Green-esque player next to these two guys, then it'll be amazing. I know some people are very high on Cameron Thomas. Maybe Cameron Thomas develops in that starting shooting guard next to Kyrie. And then Claxton is your center. Maybe you upgrade the center position of the trade deadline eventually. And then yeah, your small four, or then you, yes, your starting five would be Kyrie. And then I guess Seth Curry probably to start things off. And then Cam Thomas, maybe just get him some minutes. Maybe you don't have to start him uh, or anything like that. But then Katie at the three, Ben Simmons at the four, and Claxton at the five. I think you have something going there in Brooklyn. It's just a matter of having these guys committed to the roster. But I wanted to see what Ben Simmons looked like next to these two last year. We didn't see it. So maybe this year we will, as long as KD doesn't get traded or Kyrie doesn't get traded. So, yeah, I think the Nets, if they can just fully commit, they're going to be pretty tough to beat. But we'll see. Charlotte Hornets move picks, prospects for go-to score. I agree, man. Charlotte's in a tough situation with the whole Miles Bridges situation. Miles Bridges is supposed to be that other guy for them. And I guess he still can be. The qualifying offer is still there for him. Uh, it just sucks that you can't have him on like a long-term contract. Uh, but maybe it works out to your benefit, and then you go do something else at the trade deadline. I feel like you got to do something around LaMelo Ball. This team right now is not its not going to succeed. The team they have constructed right now needs some work. It really does. And if they could go out there and swing for Donovan Mitchell, I'm not saying they should do that, but like just something like that. Make some big move or start James Booknight and see what you have in him and then figure out if he's somebody that you can kind of develop and if he'll be some kind of star next LaMelo. And then you figure it out from there and see what else you can do. Honestly, I just want to see the Hornets go away from Gordon Hayward. And Rozier is fine and all, but I would trade him as well. Get LaMelo Ball, somebody younger in the backcourt with them. That's just my idea. Rozier and Gordon Hayward are only going to take you so far. So LaMelo Ball, obviously franchise cornerstone point guard, but get him some help. And if Washington can be, developed or be solid, that's cool as well. Chicago Bulls get Lonzo Ball healthy. Swap Nikola Vucevic for a stopper. See, there was a lot of rumors about them going for Rudy Gobert. So instead of having a center that could space the floor and play offense, they'd rather have a center that could play a little bit of defense. Somebody who immediately comes to mind is Jakob Pertl in San Antonio. Vucevic is on a, uh, an expiring contract, so I feel like you could maybe make something happen because the Spurs do have cap space to take on Vucevic's contract, and then they could send you Jakob Pertl. That's the guy that immediately comes to mind for me. Um, you know, Gobert was an option, but it never really was because what Minnesota gave up. So 
Yeah, I like the idea of Jakob Pertl if they are going to go for that, unless if Vucevic wants to just develop into a defensive stopper, but probably is not going to happen. So, yeah, I do agree with this. Get like another rim, get a rim protector. Maybe just get one off the bench. Maybe keep Vucevic and get Jakob Pertl off the bench. Trade Kobe White for Pertl or something like that. That'd be cool. Boom Cavaliers, move Colin Sexton and maybe more for a two way wing. Okay, so you sign and trade Colin Sexton. I kind of always brought up the idea of signing and trading and getting Donovan Mitchell in Cleveland. And then you have like a Garland, Mitchell, Mobley, Allen core. That would be really, really nasty and insane. That'd be so much fun. But at the same time, uh, if you want to keep Sexland together, I do understand. It just depends. I mean, Colin Sexton got injured. So unfortunate. The Cleveland Cavaliers went through some very interesting things last year where they started out interesting. And then Colin Sexton got hurt. And then Ricky Rubio became the hero. And then he got hurt. And obviously, they still were pretty good and made the play-in, but ultimately did not make the playoffs, which was a very fun season for Cleveland. But yeah, man, it's just a matter of taking that next step, and uh, I'm not sure if Colin Sexton is the guy you want to keep around and make that next step or not. We'll see. Dallas Mavericks find Luka Doncic a, co a full-fledged co-star. Yeah, I mean, they got Christian Wood. Uh, they got, like, Dinwiddie, who was pretty good in the playoffs. But yeah, they need to get Luka Doncic that next guy. That's something that we've been searching or for the Mavericks to need to be searching for. They got Porzingis. That did not really work out whatsoever. Porzingis was not really what he once was when he was in New York. Uh, once his injury was uh, all said and done. And then I don't think he liked his role too much with Rick Carlisle and stuff there. So, yeah, get Luka Doncic a co-star. I mean, we'll see if they decide to do that. I really like the roster they have right now. I'm not sure how far it can go, but I do like the role players they have. I think it's just a matter of finding that uh, guy, finding that second guy next to Luka. And then this team could be very, very interesting in the West. Denver Nuggets, if they aren't already, by the way. Denver Nuggets, get healthy and get a new backup big. Yeah, they signed DeAndre Jordan, which uh, a lot of people don't like DeAndre Jordan and uh, say he's the worst center in the league. So, yeah, DeAndre Jordan, once upon a time, used to be really good. But, yeah, lately, he's not that guy anymore. So, yeah, as long as Michael Porter and Jamal Murray can be healthy and you get a better backup center, I like the idea of that. Even getting Dwight Howard would have been better than DeAndre Jordan. So, yeah, I get, and also the Nets are interesting, uh, Dwight Howard. I forgot to mention that. But regardless, yeah, get KCP and Bruce Brown. I love the offseason the Nuggets had, even if it was just like two minor moves. I still loved it. If these two can be healthy, they're going to be a contender. Detroit Pistons, stay patient and keep fingers crossed for Webb and Yama sweepstakes. Bro, imagine Detroit lands Webb and Yama. Oh my gosh, you have a Cade Cunningham, Jaden Ivey, Sadiq Bey, Webb and Yama core. I would be fearful of that. I don't think the Pistons will be bad enough, though. I think the Pistons are going to actually be decent this year because of how good Jaden Ivey could maybe be. And then Sadiq Bey is going to get better. Kate Cunningham's only going to get better. I'm not sure they're going to be as bad as uh, people think. Well, I don't know if anyone's really thinking they're going to be that bad. But, like, you have to be very, very bad to potentially have the number one. Well, I guess you don't have to. You could jump up like crazy in the lottery now. But, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think they'll be, like, worst team type thing anymore. I think they'll definitely be, like, up there. Maybe even... For, Fighting for a plan seed if things all go well for them. But, man, if they could get killing... Or not killing. Why did I say killing? If they can get Webin Yama, yeah, that'd be crazy. Go so Warriors running back, but watch James Wiseman closely. Yeah, so you run it back. There has been some things about Draymond Green wanting a contract extension. So I'm not sure what the Warriors are going to do about that. They obviously already have a lot of money to spend out on Wiggins and Jordan Poole. But, yeah, let's see what James Wiseman can do. You got Kamenga, who's going to probably step into a bigger role. Maybe Moses Moody does as well. The Warriors have some guys who can step up. Houston Rockets add Andrew Wiggins and a restricted free agent next summer. So they are particularly saying add Andrew Wiggins to this Rockets team. And I'm not sure I can agree with that because Wiggins, if he was going to go to Houston, I feel like it'd be for a ton of money. You'd give Wiggins like a lot of money. And I think the Rockets should rather should just stay patient and figure out what they have. Like, you, you don't need to go for Andrew Wiggins, I guess. Like, I wouldn't mind signing a like, restricted free agent this summer. Like, let's say, for instance, Sadiq Bay, for some reason, Detroit don't want to resign, which is not the case at all. But I would like a guy like that or a DeAndre Hunter going to Houston. Andrew Wiggins is a little bit older for me that I wouldn't do that particularly. So, and he'd probably want a ton of money. I feel like I'd want a guy that would rather fit my timeline of my core. So, uh, it's interesting, though. Internet, Indiana Pacers clear out remaining vets, maximize lottery odds, and go from there. So, yeah, this is another team that maybe should go for Webb and Yama or Scooter Henderson even if they, you know, fall that far. So, yeah, I mean, Halliburton and the Pacers have something going for them. I like what they got in Benedict Matherin. We'll see what he looks like. They have Duarte. They have some They have some nice young players. I think Halliburton's the clear standard out there for now. They did a great job by getting him for Sabonis, and uh, we'll see what else they can do from there.
Los Angeles Clippers get Kawhi Leonard healthy. I mean, yeah, the Clippers are already contender as long as Kawhi is on the court. So really not much to say about that. They're a very deep team. Uh, revive the Westbrook to Indy talks. Yeah, so I like the idea of the Lakers trading Russell Westbrook. And if you can't get Kyrie Irving, try to get Buddy Hield and Miles Turner together if you can. If, if you really can, I don't know if you're going to be able to. But if you're able to pull that off, I would do it in a heartbeat. Because I think Buddy Hield and Miles Turner would fit so much better than Russell Westbrook currently does on your roster. LeBron James at point guard, Miles Turner at the center, Buddy Hill at the two or three, whatever you want to do, Anthony Davis at the four. Like, There's so many possibilities with the Lakers if they're able to do this, but not sure if they're going to be able to. We'll see what happens. Russell Westbrook, man, not sure where his career, where his career would go from there if he did get traded to Indy and then get bought out. Or same situation with San Antonio. If he got bought out, where would he go? What would happen? I'd be very, very curious to watch that situation. Memphis Grizzlies make a splashy addition to the front court. All right, so you have Jaron Jackson. So I assume this means like the center position. I really liked it when they had Joe Val. I mean, I I guess they got Zara Williams out of the trade, I believe. But I really did like it when they had Jonas Valanciunas on this team. I thought he was like a really good center for them. They traded him to New Orleans and got Steven Adams instead. So yeah, I guess you can just find like a different center. Maybe James Wiseman enters restricted free agency and you sign him outright. I don't know. You do have a really nice core with Jaron Jackson, John Morant, and Desmond Bain, though. So it's just a matter of making that other move. And boom, you got it. I'm not sure who that guy is, though. So we'll see. Yeah, Miami Heat get a deal done for Durant somehow. I'm sorry, man. But the Miami Heat just do not have the trade package for Kevin Durant. They just don't. They just don't. But I guess you do say Pat Riley always finds a way or whatever it may be. Unless you're trading Bam out of bio, then I'm not sure it's going to happen. So... I don't even think Kevin Durant to the Miami Heat is a possibility anymore. I really don't. My, my Milwaukee Bucks, Dan Patton, get healthy. Yeah, as long as you have Chris Middleton and then you got Joe, you added Joe Ingles, kept Bobby Portis around, the Bucks are a contender. They won a championship with this core. Just got to run it back and hope Chris Middleton can stay healthy. Minnesota Timberwolves, fine perimeter defenders. Yep, so, uh, you know, in the playoffs, they kind of melted a little bit against the Grizzlies. They were blowing some leads like crazy. Adding Rudy Gobert is going to very much help, but definitely going to need some perimeter defense. So Edwards and Jamie Daniels should be up to task. D'Angelo Russell certainly won't. So if Russell can maybe buy into the defensive end a little bit more because he's not going to be relied on offense as much anymore, that would be great. I'm not sure we will see that. But yeah, perimeter defense is going to be very, very important because we all know Gobert can be very, very exposed if he doesn't have good perimeter defenders. So we'll see if Russell buys in. I think Edwards and McDaniels will do a fine job. Cat will do whatever he can. But D'Lo, I'm not sure. We'll see. Number 19, New Orleans Pelicans finding a better defender at the five. So Joe Val at the five, they want to find something different. I like Joe Val's fit next to Zion, but I do understand the idea of that. Immediately a guy, once again, that comes to mind that's like a good uh, inside defender that might be available is like Yaka Pertle, but I'm not sure if uh, the, I'm not sure if the Pelicans are really looking at that. I, I think it makes sense for the Bulls. I'm not sure if it makes sense for the Pelicans, but regardless, yes. New York Knicks win the Donovan Mitchell sweepstakes at a reasonable cost. Yep, this is the... Something that would definitely help the Knicks get a Donovan Mitchell, Julius Randle, RJ Barrett, Jalen Brunson core going, and then eventually trade Julius Randle when you can, add something different there. And then you have a really nice core with Jalen Brunson, RJ Barrett, and then obviously uh, Donovan Mitchell. So what could that do in the East? I'm not sure, but it's definitely a good start to something. Uh, a great start, I should say. But yeah, if you can get Donovan Mitchell in New York, you definitely do it. It would bring so much, so much excitement to Madison Square Garden that they haven't had in so long. So... Yeah, I like the idea of that. Oklahoma City Thunder hit the 2023 lottery jackpot, then trade to fill in gaps. So if they had Chet and Webb and Yama, oh my gosh, that front court would be kind of nasty. So yeah, the Thunder, if they get one more good lottery, they have to realize, man, we got to go for it. We got to go for this then. So if the Thunder somehow did win the lottery in this year's draft, and they get get Webb and it all comes down to like the whole Webb and Yama thing. Like the man looks like an absolute stud. Looks like somebody that shouldn't even exist, honestly. So, yeah, I like the idea of this. If the Thunder can win the lottery, then trade it and the trade make trades to fill in the gaps. Definitely do it. Oklahoma City's got something going. Eventually, they are going to get aggressive. I assume so. I assume Sam Presti is going to eventually flip it to where they get more aggressive and things can happen. So. Atlanta Magic at a perimeter shot creator deal or develop Jonathan Isaac. Yeah, man, I'm so torn on Jonathan Isaac. The guy has not been able to stay healthy. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. I mean, I like what the Magic have going for them. I think it's just a matter of figuring out who needs to stay and who needs to go. And then those guys that need to go, 
You need to get good value for them in return, whether it's just getting picks or getting another player in return that you feel like, you know, develops or fits a little bit better, then you do it. I don't know if Jonathan Isaac or Markel Fultz fit that bill anymore. Uh, you got Cole Anthony, Jalen Suggs, RJ. Like, there's so many guards there. And then for uh, the forward spot, you have Chumo Kiki, Wendell Carter, Franz Wagner. So I'm not sure. We'll see what the Magic decide to do. I think it's just a matter of finding who needs to stay and who needs to go. 76ers poke around for a backup center, but that might do it. Uh, yeah, so the 76ers already have a really good roster. James Harden took a pay cut in order for them to add P.J. Tucker and Dan Daniel House. So I like those two additions. I'm sure they'll be still... And they added DeAnthony Melton, not to add, uh, not to mention. So they got their bench got a lot better. Tucker will probably be the starting forward, I assume, or be one of the starting forwards. So uh, I do like it, though, for Philadelphia. They're going to get tougher. Embiid, James Harden, Tobias Harris, and then... Maxi P.J. Tucker, that's a good starting five in the East. And if James Harden can somehow return to what he used to be in Houston, they'd be very, very scary. I'm just not sure if that guy's in him anymore. We haven't seen it in a while. The Phoenix Suns try to win the Durant sweepstakes somehow. Yeah, I mean, this is what you got to do. If you're the Phoenix Suns, you already have a really good roster, but try to win and get Kevin Durant is just going to only up your chances. Having a big three of Chris Paul, Kevin Durant, and Devin Booker sounds scary in my mind. It's just a matter of, how much you're giving up to get Kevin Durant, which is a lot, by the way. So would your team be depleted after that point? Not sure, but that's obviously been kind of the rumor and uh, has not happened. Portland Trailblazers is my favorite team. Unloaded assets for a star. This is what I've been saying. Okay, so I thought they might do it this offseason. They decided not to do it. So at the trade deadline, they have put themselves in a pretty good position. They have a lot of young players. And once the if they are like a playoff team at the trade deadline what they could do is they could uh unprotect their pick for the chicago bulls because they already know they're a playoff team i don't know i don't know how that all works i don't know if chicago could like agree or disagree to that and they're like no you're not going to do anything in the trade deadline. i'm not sure how that would all work but if they did just like lift the protections on that bulls pick then all their future picks open up and then they could look to make some trades and i think they have every single pick other than this uh pick other than this next year's draft if we do make the playoffs because uh, so, it's lottery protected. So unload assets for a star. I agree. I'm not sure who that star is, but you have Simons as an asset. You have Shane Sharp as an asset. You have Keon Johnson, who uh, maybe could be looked at as an asset. He looked pretty good in summer league. And then you got a bunch of just young players that might be interested in some. I don't know. Kind of depends where other teams are, though. That's what it's really going to boil down to. Where are other teams at at the trade deadline? Are they contending? Are they looking to rebuild? What's going to happen? I don't even know. Like, I'm not sure who that star will be, but I think they definitely are in a good position to maybe acquire one. We'll see who it is, though, if they do get one. I, anyway, Sacramento Kings package Harrison Barnes with picks for best young forward available. The only one that comes to mind for the Sacramento Kings is John Collins, and I think John Collins to bonus front court would not be that good defensively, so not sure I would even do that. But yeah, I understand the package Harrison Barnes with picks. He is on an expiring contract, but I also like Barnes fit in Sacramento for a, just like a 3 and D role player, so... I don't know, man. We'll see what the Kings decide to do. Uh, you know, let's just let's see them make the playoffs first before we even talk about them potentially being a championship contender. San Antonio Spurs go all in on the next two drafts. Yeah, I mean, the Spurs bottomed out. We all know they're going for this guy right here. So uh, we don't even have to say too much about that. Toronto Raptors make a Durant deal happen without losing Scotty Barnes. Man, the Nets would have to get really, really desperate in order for this to happen in my mind. But hey, if the Raptors can pull it off, they'll be scary for the next whatever many years Kevin Durant stays there. So yeah, I like the idea of that. I mean, the Raptors have assets. They really do. If you're not trading Scotty Barnes and you have a Kevin Durant, Fred Van Vliet, Scotty Barnes team, I, I don't know who would be on the roster if you didn't trade Scotty Barnes. So yeah, I mean, the Raptors would definitely have a really good roster over there. Utah Jazz get a gazillion picks for Donovan Mitchell, shape roster around selections. Yep, there you go. That's what you do for Donovan Mitchell. You bought him out. Trade him to the New York Knicks, get your eight draft picks and Quentin Grimes or something like that. See what Quentin Grimes becomes and see what all these other guys become and then continue to flip Clarkson and Bullion. The formula is there for Utah. I don't need to say this. Danny Ainge knows what he's doing. So Utah is probably not going to be a championship contender anytime soon. Number 30, Washington Wizards get Porzingis rolling and add impact wing, but be ready to bail. Okay, so basically you're relying on Porzingis to maybe return what he used to be. Maybe he can do that. Maybe he can't. And then add another wing player. And if things don't go well, get ready to trade Bradley Beal and just, you know, go all in on rebuilding. So, yeah, I kind of like the idea of that. So, although the only thing I don't like about that idea is they did give Bradley Beal no trade clause. So, if they did go that route, Bradley Beal gets to choose where he goes. So, 
kind of limits them in a way. But regardless, that was the moves every NBA team needs to make to win a title. I kind of agree with a lot of what I saw. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Drop a like if you did. This is Crushables Extended. I'm saying peace. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you click here to watch another video that I know you'll love.